This is Paul Messink. He's a glass artist and an instructor, and he's here to talk about his work and his new video education series, Creating Dimension. Paul, tell us about your new video series. Well, uh, I have been teaching my uh, techniques for about eight years, and during COVID, I took some time out to re-record an earlier video series. I expanded it from eight hours to 30 hours of content. And I teach you everything about how I create my layered glass pieces. And what techniques and topics do you cover in the video series? I, I cover everything you need to make these. Um, at the beginning, the focus is on working with glass enamel because we paint with glass enamel on individual layers of glass. And then the, as the course progresses, we move into the processes that you need to stack those layers in a kiln and fuse them together into a single solid piece. So those are the two main topics, learning how to paint on layers and then learning how to fuse them together. And you mentioned there are 30 videos. There's 30 hours of video. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what other materials do you get with them? Well, you get the, the, the video, you get about 300 pages of notes and handouts that go along with each video. You get downloadable firing schedules for the kiln, materials lists, and then for even some of the sample projects that we cover in the class, you get downloadable files that you can print so that you can use those as a reference while making your, your exercises. Why is painting on layered glass different than other kinds of art? Well, the, the biggest issue that you deal with in, in, in my technique is that at the end we fuse all the layers together in a kiln. And the kiln gets to almost 1500 degrees. So most most materials that you think about as paint, whether it's oil paint or acrylic, those would burn up at that heat. So we have to use something called glass enamel. Glass enamel is essentially co the color, the, the pigment that you add to glass to turn it different colors. We paint that on the surface and then fire it on. Um, and these enamels are specially designed so they withstand the, uh, the heat in the kiln. So um, the material is different. Then the other thing that's different is, is normally in a painting, you're painting on a single surface, a canvas or a watercolor paper or a board. We divide an image into multiple layers and we paint a different part of the image on each layer. So then when they're stacked together, you get a lot of dimension. You can see that some trees are in the foreground and other trees are in the background. And that just adds a whole new complexity to the, uh, to the painting itself. Can you please show? Sure, <laughs> I'd be happy to. So this is uh, a piece called Misty Morning. It's nine layers of glass. So the very back layer is a layer of white. So it's not completely see-through, but the white helps pick up any light from behind it and kind of spread that light through the piece. And then the other eight layers have uh, trees painted on them, a different tree in each layer. Can we see the different layers, please? Sure. So this is essentially the same piece, but I have the layers uh, as individual layers, but they have not been uh, fused or melted together. And so you can see from here that a different part of that image is on each layer. 
And as you go into the background, the trees get thinner and smaller. Um, in my style, the colors get lighter because typically my trees kind of fade into a white or a gray background. And then the back layer has just a little bit of background color. How do you divide up the, the uh, photograph itself? You divide it up into five different uh, glass slides, but how, how does that work? Well, it's a little bit of um, uh, creative work. So I, I start with that reference photo. I always like to see what I want to paint printed out on paper. And then I'll identify the, the objects in that painting that are the closest mm -hmm. and the ones that are farthest away. And those go on the front and the back layers, respectively. And then all the other things, whether they're trees or people or sailboats, whatever the subject is, all everything in the middle I will assign to a layer based on its relative size, based on where it's placed next to something else. Is the green and the blue image the same image? These are uh, these came from the same reference photos. Mm -hmm. um, I painted uh, uh, this one in in green, and then I decided as a teaching aid I would paint it again. I usually don't like to paint the same thing twice, so I painted this one in blue, and I will never fire these together. It's such a good uh, visual aid. When you finish with your layers, such as the blue, then what is the process to fuse them? Well, um, once they're painted, they, they go into my kiln. The kiln is basically a big electric oven with a very flat uh, surface. Uh, they go in there and I heat them to 1100 degrees and that, that burns the enamel onto the surface of the glass. So there's a first firing of the layers individually. But when all the layers are complete and everything's been fired on, then uh, I clean the layers real well, I stack them on the floor of the kiln, and then I have to surround them with special ceramic, it's very smooth ceramic. Uh, and then, then that stack goes in the kiln. Depending on the thickness, it may be in the kiln uh, anywhere from two days to a week. And it's a very, very slow uh, process in the kiln. You can heat it relatively quickly, but once it's melted, the cooling process has to be uh, controlled very carefully. Otherwise, uh, it will crack and break. For your students, for the video instruction, uh, what is the typical layering? How many layers do the students produce? We, we start in a somewhat smaller format. We usually work in a 6 inch by 8 inch size and this is 8 by 10. Mm -hmm. So it's a little little less than half of this or a little more than half of this size. And they usually work with 7 layers rather than 9 layers. So that's kind of where I start people off. It's enough layers to get a great sense of depth and dimension but it's not so much that it becomes complicated or overly time-consuming. Where are they able to source the uh, materials? A lot of the materials are available from uh, art supply places, some tools and things. But when I started selling the videos, I also started selling the supplies. So I have two different websites. One is called CoachellaGlassWorksEDU.com. And that's the education site where you can buy the videos. And then there's a companion site called CoachellaGlassworks.com. And there you can buy the enamels in powdered form along with the liquid medium. And you, you mix those as you need them. You can buy the enamels, the tools. You can buy the dams. Um, you can buy stands that look like this. And if you're new to glass, you can even buy the glass in pre-cut sizes. Most uh, glass artists are used to buying large sheets and then cutting them up as they need it. But when you're starting out, it, uh, it is uh, a certain comfort to know that everything's cut well and comes ready, already cut for a specific size project. Uh, what would be the expectation of someone who's never done this before that wanted to take this class? What could be their expectation for final product? 
Um, I get that question a lot because I get I get people that say, "Well, I've never painted before. I've you know I'm afraid of a paintbrush." I geared the class so that even if you've never painted before, you're going to learn some great techniques. Um, the very first technique I teach is a stencil technique, um, so that you don't feel like you have to be Picasso right away or Rembrandt. Um, and it's, it's often easier to cut a stencil out of clear plastic than to pick up a brush and start doing things. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. I usually don't mention this in the class itself, but in my class, even when I'm teaching live, I never say, okay, now it's time to pick up your paintbrush because I can see the, the look on people's faces when they go, oh, um, but we start with some very simple techniques. And what I find is I'll, I'll do a few demos and I'll just pick up a brush and I'll do some simple things. And the students just, at the time they need a brush, they pick up the brush. And at, at, at that point, they, they have something they want to accomplish. They don't have a blank canvas in front of them. And it makes it easier for them to begin applying enamel to the glass. So I start at a very basic level. We start with some very simple exercises and then work up to trees or mountains. And my, my new series has lots of demos. In the 30 hours of video content, there's, it's probably about 15 hours of instruction and 15 hours of demos. So I demo everything from um, how to do stencils, how to use the brush, how to use other tools like a sponge or a palette knife. And we just explore a lot of things. All, I've got demos on how to do water scenes and how to do clouds, for example, or mountains. You learn a lot by watching and then doing some of those same exercises. But I encourage people to find their own images. And I, in, in the video, I tell people um, how to look for images. What kind of images work good in this in this uh, kind of technique? Because a lot of images won't. Uh, you need to understand which images will translate into a three-dimensional perspective. Um, and we also talk about things like uh, where to find images, some good sources of images online, and how to uh, talk to photographers to get their permission to use the photos. Can the videos be streamed? Yes, um, all the videos are uh, come in a streaming format so that you can watch them on a computer or on a tablet. You can even watch on a, on a phone, but I think that's that's a little hard to see with a with a small screen. Um, but when you buy the videos, they never expire. You can watch them over and over. So if there's a particular demo that you are trying to reproduce and it didn't turn out well the first time, you can go back and rewatch it as often as you want. Um, I'm also starting to work on a downloadable version. Uh, I want to make sure that people won't download them and you know post them on the internet. Uh, so that that's the hard part of making them downloadable is making sure that only the buyer can can play them. But a lot of artists have their studios in a garage or in an outbuilding on their property or in the basement, someplace where they don't have good internet access. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that as well and I'm hopefully fairly close to an announcement on that. Paul, how can people find out more information if they're interested? Well, go to my two websites. Mm -hmm. The first one is coachellaglasswork.edu.com, and that has information on all the videos. The videos um, are packaged into four series, so there's four uh, courses that you can buy, but you can save money and buy the entire bundle um, together. And then the second website is coachellaglassworks.com. And that is the site where you would buy the enamels and the glass and the tools and so forth. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, you can also go to my artist website, which is paulmessink.com.
And if they wanted to uh, contact you directly, they go to your website and contact you through the website? Yeah, my email address is there. There's a contact form you can fill out. Um, I have a list of galleries uh, that carry my work and uh, a lot of a lot more information on my work and on live workshops. Anything we didn't cover today? I think we got it all. I, I, I think this video series is a great opportunity for someone to be introduced to glass, but um, it's also a really good opportunity for glass artists who have been making uh, maybe fused plates and bowls and, and kind of flat things for a while to branch out into something different. Um, so if you're, if you're looking for something new, for some new techniques that uh, work really well and give you uh, kind of a unique look to your work, this is, this is a great option. I, I enjoyed learning about your technique right now in your recent video series. Knowing you a little bit, uh, I know how organized you are, and so uh, I'd like to take the class myself. Let me sign up right now. All right, I'll sign you up for my next live class. <laughs>